In this video, we're going to focus on how we can give a data label on a very specific bar. So sometimes you might want to have this it's just to highlight a specific bar. And you can see here now, we control it by making sure that only one specific bar, even if you have multiple data sets, will only show on one specific bar. So let's start to explore how to do it. In this video, we're going to focus on a viewer's question, which is how to show the data label only in one bar chart in Chart.js. This question came from one of my other videos about how to show values inside a stacked bar chart in Chart.js. And if you scroll down here, eventually this question came from Brovisoft. So a special thank you to Brovisoft for, for asking the question. And this is what he's asking. Is it possible to show only one selected value on one selected bar? Or in other words, can I show only one value on a specific bar? Yes, you can, but you have to play around with some of the functions and uh, the tools of data labels. So let's start and work on this. First of all, let's go and get our default code here. So what I recommend you to go to, go to is to chartjs 3com getting started. For some reason, I get this error. You can try. I noticed that on Google Chrome and on Firefox, it does work well. But for some reason, my computer doesn't. Why? I don't know. However, copy all of this code here. We're going to use this as our starting point. So once we copy this, and if you want to understand what this all does, please watch this specific video that explains how that works. So we're going to paste this all in here, and then I'm going to cut out here, and this is for myself. Put in the title there. All right, save this. Save, refresh. So now we have a bar chart and what we eventually want to do is to have the data labels plugin activated because with that we can start working on showing specific values. So to do this, we need the chart.js data or the chart.js plugin data label CDN link. So you just go to CDN.js and then in here you can find this specific item. Here you will see here version 2.0.0, that's the one we need. Click here on copy script tag. Once you copy that, just go down here and make sure you paste it in here. Very important, make sure that you first load the chart.js library and afterwards you load this specific library, which is dependent on the chart.js because this is the data labels, which has certain commands that must be read first in this specific item here. All right, so once we did this, if we save this, you will see still nothing happens. We only have inserted the script, but we didn't activate it or register it. So what we want to do now is to activate this. To activate the plugin, you go in here in the config section. And then in here, you click here the options. Go in options, put a comma here. Then we say plugins, and then we get here the plugins name. So the official name of this is chart. Um, yes, that yes, that's chart. Sorry, data labels. Pay attention here. C D and L, and this label is an S. If I save this now, I should see here the values. All right, so now we have the values here, but we're not done now, because by default, the chart.js data labels always put in the values here on every specific one. We don't want this. So what we need to do now is to filter out. To filter out, we're going to use the formatter function. And the formatter basically allows us to format the text or whatever is in here. We can put here all kinds of items, but what we want to do now is make a if statement. If it hits a certain value, show that value and else do not show it. Or not even a value, but let's say here, I want to show this purple bar, which is Friday. For this, we can easily do that. Let's start to work with this. So in here in the options, I'm going to click here and enter, or press enter, then to do plugins. And then what we're going to say here is data labels with an S, column, and then here curly braces. Make sure you have a comma here, and then we can continue on here. And then what we want to do here is basically the following. We're going to use the formatter, as I indicated, the formatter. And the formatter will have two parameters that we need, the value parameter, and we need the context parameter. And we're going to show them afterwards what they are. So this is a, so we're going to use a arrow function here. So, and then what we want to do here is basically to display certain values. So right now I'm just going to show you the default value that we're going to show, which is basically this one here. So we can, or we can just get this and put it in here. 
So once we do this, if I save this, let's see if it works. It just shows it shows nothing special because basically it just shows a value here. So if I do a console log, we can start to learn what is really inside of this. So we have an understanding of this. Uh, what we have to do here in the format that we still have to do a few items in here because basically this here is just a plain item. So if I save this now, this you probably get an error here, yeah, of course because our console log is not correct here. This here doesn't work. Let's see, it works here, no. The syntax is incorrect. All right, so what we're going to do here is basically create a very basic if statement. I'm going to say here for, for the sake of it, if this equals strict, and then I'm going to just say the value would be, uh, let's get our data set here, 18. If it's equal to 18, that moment I want to show the value so I want to show value and else we hide it so if I save this now and refresh oh, we still get an error all right so what is the error here probably this one save that there we are so now we only have a specific one but what I really want to do here and for some reason I get this console log error because we have this built in here we made this too concise uh, so what I will do here is the following. I'm going to show you here another way to do it. So we're going to do the format. I'm going to do the more extensive one. And basically here we go I'll create a function and then we're going to add up these here. So what I really want is this. So I'm going to comment this out for now. I'm just going to grab here the console log because this one has the built in if function in the an if function in here is an if function plus it's a shortcut for function with the arrow. So what I want to do here just to show the values so it's easier to understand. We don't want to show any other item here, or basically it shows you default. That's all right, but we don't need the default. What I really want to get is this here. So you can see our console log. Our console log just shows the value, but I don't want this now because I want to pinpoint the purple one here, this one. But I don't want to get it based on value. I want to get it based on the array number. So you can see here where we're going to use this context now. So if I refresh here, you can see here we get now the items here and if you hover over you will get all of these items here it doesn't matter and basically if i click on this you will see here it will get us the data index and that is the real item we want you want the data index because the data index would indicate the index number and as well the data set if you would have two data sets here and i'm going to show you as well that then you will have this and this specific value that you will need and we don't need number five what we need is number Four. Why number four? Because this is element, the fifth element in array, but this, but the fifth element is index number four. Why? This is zero, one, two, three, four. So that's the one we need. As you can see, if we move over it, it is index data of data index number four. All right. So what I'm going to do now is the follow. I'm going to just say here console log, and then we have here we have the context, and then we're going to get here the data index. So I'm going to show you this so you have an understanding of this and then we have also another one because this will be later on important if you would have multiple items here. So this we have the data index, sorry data, I need to get the data set index. Alright, so if I save this now and refresh, you can see if I hover over this one, there you are, you can see immediately we get the correct values here and this is essential for us to work with. So I'm going to use this now with here so how will we do this so we have the context here let's get now the console.log context and just show you specific items so this will show you everything here but what do i want to grab i want to grab basically the value here so we could say here if we would get the value by default we will get every value and what i really want to get here is the specific value let's see if we can find the specific value here if i get this one and hover over this, we get the data index, all right. And we have the charts, so far we have to go into the chart, and in the chart, where are we going? We're going into the data. Uh, let's see, we are chart item. Oh, sorry, we're not going data. Why? We go first into configs. Am I correct? Hold on, I'll just check quickly. All right, sorry, I was slightly confused, and the reason why I thought it was config is because we are in, into the chart 
from chart going to config and from config going to the data sets or from data to data sets and then data. Luckily, we don't have to do that. And the reason why is after some looking here and searching, if you scroll down here, you will find data set. And you can see here every information we get. And basically, I want to get here this specific value, which is four, is Friday, and Friday is 12. So that's the one I need. So the reason why this is important is because we need to know the starting point. It's just data set here. So this will be quite nice. So I'm going to scroll down here, back to this. Then I'm going to show you exactly what I want to do. We are here in data set, and the data set here will eventually show this here, the data. So we need to go in here, if I'm correct. This is the one. All right. So I'm going to grab this. Then here, if I just put in number four, you will see we'll just grab this specific one. No matter what I do, we always get number 12 here. All right, even though there, there's an entire loop in here, so don't worry about it because of all of this here. So how do we get this? Well, let's look back here into this. Uh, we have the data index. The data index is the one we need. Save that. Refresh. As you can see here, if I look move over this, move over this one, this one is always number four, or this is number four if we move over here. This one is always number 12 because we hard-coded number four. So we get here the number four value. So if I save this now, then there we are. We get this, all right. So what I want to do now is uh, this specific value, and you could see here it changes as well. Why? Because it's dynamic right now. So all I need to do is this. We're going to grab this specific value here and put it in there. So we have this. So we want to have this one being shown only if, and this is the only if here, the value here, no, will be only if the constant context data value equals number four. So we hard code this basically. I'm going to comment out this all. So I hope you were able to follow along. And now we should see this one. Save this, refresh. Oh, no semicolon. Sorry, don't, don't do that one. You get all these errors. And there we are. So we have this here. So the question now would be, what happened if you have multiple data sets? Well, all right, let's check this out. Copy this, comma, paste that in there. Let's say weekly uh, cost. And then I'm just going to delete all these kind of values here. So there's only a single value or single red one here. All right, so now we have two here, and I can imagine maybe you say, well, hold on, I don't want them all. What I want them is basically two things. I want to make sure that this is only data set equals to, well, let's comment out this. We should be able to see here now the data set is specifically this one, the data index. So if I save that here, and I'm just going to comment this out, save that. All right, so if I hover over this one, you can see here, and then move this, there we are. So it will loop through it, but this is basically the item I need. And all what I need is basically here to do another if statement that will confirm basically two things. And that is equal to that, and that would be equal to the other one as well. So let's do that one now. So what we will do basically is here put in another condition on here on this if statement so let me put this all here we already got this this is very important information that we need so we're going to save that refresh so we have these here it will show both of them then what I want to do here basically is here the data index or data set index then we just say here and let me say here uh, context data set index equals strict number one save if that is the case, it will only show on this specific item here. And that's basically how you can do it. And you can change this as well to put it on zero. Then it will only show on this specific purple one here. And of course, you can change it around with the values here. But that is basically, let's say if you do number one, it will focus on the blue one on Tuesday, which is the uh, data set zero and index or basically the, se the second one, which is uh, zero one to be concise. So this is basically how you can do this. So if you want to learn more about the format there, I highly recommend you to check out this specific video. 
Number 14 about the format of options that shows you more things with the format and how you can change text as well on your bar chart.